Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Frugalissima. My name's Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing. Today I've got a review for you of the Galaxy T, which is what I'm wearing here, and that's by Batten Scissors Cloth. So first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far. If this is the kind of video that you like, I bring you reviews and plans and makes on a Sunday. During the week, I've got some tips and tricks. And on a Friday, I've been doing Frugal Fridays, which is part of the 100 Days of Sewing series. So if you hit the notification bell, that will tell you when I've got new videos out. So on to the review. The Galaxy T is a free pattern by Pattern Scissors Cloth. And it's one that I found whilst I was doing one of my uh, Frugal Friday videos. And it's just a basic tee, but it's just a bit elevated with these puff sleeves. So you've got a nice puff sleeve and it's gathered into a cuff here. So I've just got a quick review of it and some hints and tips for you if you want to sew it yourself. So you've got classic t-shirt shape really with a quite a high crew neck and then it's quite straight through the body. The point of difference really is these puff sleeves that's, that are gathered into this quite deep cuff. So it's designed for knits and it's recommending a medium weight cotton jersey. So you don't really want anything with too much drape because it won't hold the puff here in the top of the sleeves. This is a cotton jersey that I've used, one that I picked up to make a dress a while ago last year. Uh, and I didn't have enough for the dress and I thought it was perfect weight for this and it, it is, it's just holding this, the puff nicely. You don't want anything like a viscose jersey or something like that because it just it would just be too floppy unless that's the look that you're going for. So a single cotton jersey and it wants at least 25 to 30 percent stretch and that's just so that you can get it over your head here. It's not tight around the head, but you just need a little bit of stretch in it. There are 10 sizes in this pattern and they go from 88 centimetres to 122 centimetres. That equates to a 34 inch bust to a 48 inch bust. Depending on your size, you're going to need just over a metre of fabric. I think it quotes one metre, 10 centimetres, or up to 1.6 if you go for the larger sizing. It's available free from the Pattern Scissors Cloth website just by signing up for their newsletter. And then it's available for download straight away. And it's available as an A4 or as an A0 to print off. So just some things to remember before you start sewing with this. If you've never sewn with knits before, it does say that it's aimed at beginners, but if you're feeling a little bit nervous about sewing with knits, I do have a sew along for a Mandy Boat tee that might be a little bit simpler in construction for you. There's no net band on that and there's no gathering in the sleeves and I've got loads of hints and tips on that video for sewing with knits. So it might be worth taking a, a look at that before you embark on something like this, only because you've got a, a net band and this gathering in the sleeves. Otherwise it is just a, a very uh, basic t-shirt and nothing to worry about. So another point to note is that the pattern has been written in metric. So if you're old school like me, um, <laughs> That means that you might have to do a little bit of conversion. Um, but the most important thing to remember is it's been written with a one centimeter seam allowance, which is equates to three eighths of an inch rather than the normal five eighths of an inch. I think quite a lot of us are used to using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And this just has the three eighths of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance. I would also advise if you're going to be using a cotton jersey to make sure that you pre-wash it. It does have a tendency to shrink, so I would put it through the washing machine first. So if you're struggling to uh, determine which side is the right side with knits, something like this that's quite plain or that hasn't been printed on is quite difficult to determine. To save yourself lots of time, I just keep some masking tape and as soon as I've determined which is the right side or the wrong side, I put some masking tape on the wrong side and then each pattern piece, I label what the piece is on the wrong side. That way you're not faffing about halfway, midway through your uh, project, wondering which is the right side and the wrong side. And to tell which is the right side on a knit, it looks knitted. So it, it, you've got ever so slight ribs on the right side and on the back it will just be fairly flat and smooth and that's what they call the pearl side. And it's just more difficult on a darker fabric if you're working with a black or a navy blue or something like that. It's just easier to mark it whilst you're cutting everything out rather than faffing about halfway through. Do have another video about using masking tape in the sewing room and that's something that I mentioned on there. So if you want to take a look at that, I will link it at the end for you. There is lots of information actually within the pattern to help you along. So choosing the correct needle, a ballpoint needle or a jersey needle, making sure that you're using a nylon thread 
for example, and also using a little bit of interfacing in his shoulder seam as well, just to stabilise it. So there are only 16 pages in the pattern piece, so it's quite easy to put together just a, a glass of wine and a YouTube video whilst you're sticking it together and it'll be together in no time. Like I said before, the sizing is in centimetres and uh, my bust size, which is a 37 inch, uh, which is probably 94 centimetres, fell between two of the size ranges. I fell between the 92 centimetres and the 96 centimetres. So I did opt to go for the 96 centimetres because obviously if you if you cut it too big, you can bring it back down, but you can't do it the other way. And I did find the um, finished garment measurements a little bit confusing. They're in half widths or something, and in centimetres as well. So I just I just found that a little bit confusing. So rather than risk it, I just went for the for the larger size, and I think it turned out okay. Uh, I could probably have gone down if I wanted it more fitted. So you can see here, I've got plenty of room here. Uh, and I could probably have gone down or come in at the waist as, as well if I wanted to. Um, but I actually prefer a little bit of a loose fitting at the moment. I've got a little bit more weight on my, my waist than, than I want, so I'd, I'd rather have it that way. But if you prefer it a bit more fitted, go for the lower size because you've got pl plenty of stretch in your fabric if, if you're not too bothered about it. So yeah, there's, there's plenty of ease in this pattern. Uh, so it's up to you on how much ease you want. So construction is pretty straightforward. Like I say, she advises you to put a little bit of uh, fusible interfacing in the shoulder seam here. And she also provides a little um, guide for making a note of what um, stitch settings that you've made. It's useful for future reference if you come back to make it again so that you know which length, width and tension that you've used on your, your sewing machine. So there's still lots of gathering to do. Two rows of gathering at the top and then two rows of gathering at the bottom to, to go into your cuff. So if you don't like gathering, it's probably not the pattern for you. Uh, but they're only on short, short seams, so it's not, not much of a, a problem. And she does advise that you do your gathering stitches at either side of your stitching line. That just gives you a more even gather. A lot of people don't advise that, so it's not often I see that on patterns. So I thought that was a nice little tip. One little tip that I found is that she doesn't tell you to stop and start gathering at the seam line underneath, underneath here. So this is gathered all the way around and I would just advise that you start and stop your gathering about a centimetre at either end. You're not putting any extra bulk into that seam line and you're not stitching over your gathering stitches neither so it makes it a little easier to pull them out when you're finished. The only little, other little thing that had me scratching my head was the insertion of the neckband. Rather than it being designed for the seam of the neckband to go right at your centre back, it's actually designed to go a little bit off the shoulder seam so that you're not adding bulk into the shoulder seam. All the notches are aligned that way. I tried to put that seam right in the centre back and obviously none of the notches lined up. So just look out for that. I just like to have my seam at the back and it, that's just personal preference. So I did it the way that she did it so that everything lined up. You so you just need to remember to mark a notch in the centre front and mark a notch in the centre back uh, and then you'll be absolutely fine. Everything will line up. It didn't explain it in words and the pictures did show it off to one side ever so slightly and I just missed it. So it's just something to look out for. So the instructions call for twin needles all over, including on this shoulder seam here, uh, which is a little bit unusual. So it's telling to twin needle around the neck and your hemline as well. If you don't have a twin needle, don't worry about it. You can just do a zigzag and ignore that um, shoulder seam top stitching. It's not necessary. I've never done it on any other T-shirt. Uh, it's just a design detail. I would stress that you would use a, a stitch that's got some sort of stretch in it. Unlike a, a V-neck or a, a low scoop neck, you do need something that's going to give you some, some stretch around here. Doesn't matter too much around your hem because it's not tight around the hips. But if you've got a twin needle, give a twin needle a go. Otherwise you can use a zigzag, just a long straight zigzag. And when I'm twin needling a hem, I always put a, a little bit of a fusible interfacing into that hem. And that just gives it a little of extra stability. It stops any tunneling, it stops any skipped stitches as well. It's just a little tip. You can use a wonder tape or you can use a normal fusible interface in a nice lightweight one and cut it on the bias. And that'll just give it enough, enough stretch to go around the hem uh, and it gives you a little bit of stability as well for your stitching. So when I'm twin needling, I use a, a longer length stitch. I use either 3.5 or 4 millimeter length. And again, that just helps uh, keeping it, your stitches nice and even. 
and there's no uh, hem to do on your bottom of your cuff here because it's just into this band so that's just one less job to do. Quite, I quite like the finish of a, of a band on a, on a cuff like that. So that's it really, I love the result. If you want it a little bit more fitted, just bring it in a little bit more at the waist or go down a size if that's your preference, but just at the moment I prefer it a little bit looser. And I love the color, I love this color. Uh, and I've got a little bit more left as well, so I might be able to squeeze a t-shirt, a sleeveless t-shirt out of it. So let me know if I've tempted you to make one or if you've already downloaded it. This was featured in one of, one of my Frugal Friday videos. If that's something that you're interested in, please uh, consider subscribing and uh, click the notification bell. That'll tell you when I've got new videos out. So that will be Frugal Fridays on a Friday, hints and tips during the week, and Sundays I've got makes and plans and reviews. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I shall speak to you later. Bye.